I call to order the February 2022 meeting of the Governance and Policy Committee. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to those of us who are joining via the live stream video and to those attending in the boardroom here today in the Twin City on the Twin Cities campus. Our first item of business today um, is action on the proposed policy amendments related to board related reports. A lot of related in that sense. Uh, no changes have been made to the proposed amendments since we reviewed them in December. Uh, Executive Director Steves and Jason Langworthy, Board Associate Policy and Committees are here to answer any final questions you might have. But before I ask for questions or comments, is there a motion to recommend approval of the resolution related to changes to board required reports? So moved. There's a second. Second. Thank you. So let's turn to the discussion. Uh, anything out of the gates, Mr. Steves? No, Madam Chair. Very good. Regent Rosha. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I, you know, I was looking through this and I, 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 I like the streamlining. Um, just wanna touch, there's just a couple of things. I, I guess one in particular that we move in the first area there with the strategic facilities and real estate report the semi-annual capital project management report goes from semi-annual to annual, I think, if, is, am I tracking that properly? So I, my question, it would be, um, you know, sometimes we've got some pretty big capital projects. Um, uh, there would, would have been some wisdom, I think, at some point to check on those every six months. Six months is a pretty good chunk of time. Um, is there any concern that, you know, you know we will not be tracking what could be, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in capital projects, um, but once a year. That, that, as I went through this, that seemed to be the one that stood out to me that where it may make sense for the board to keep its finger on those types of expenditures um, more frequently than once annually. And obviously somebody thought that, it, you know, this board thought that at one point because it was semi-annual. Executive Director Steves. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Regent Rochelle, I'll, I'll give a kind of a brief response and I'll ask um, Mr. Langworthy to, to weigh in as well. Um, my understanding of it is that the semi-annual capital project management report grew out of, uh, there was a period of time in which there were um, some overruns on projects and that the university was having trouble delivering projects within budget. And, uh, and that has subsequently, you know, was resolved and has been resolved for many, many years and has not been an issue. Um, and therefore, I think the, the, the idea was that an annual check-in would be sufficient. But uh, Mr. Langworthy, maybe you could. Yep, and, and to add to that, uh, Chair Verhalen, uh, Regent Rocha, in addition, uh, I'd remind you that you're also getting a six-year capital plan in the fall and an annual capital budget in the spring. So certainly if there were adjustments in either one of those, you'd be able to see it. You're also then uh, approving schematic designs. So once the project is approved, then they, the administration typically comes back then with a schematic design. So you can also then see the schematic design that provides you with additional information as the project is progressing. So there's actually a formal approval rather than just the reporting that's taking place and more so in real time with those projects. Madam Chair. Uh Sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, that, that that's helpful. And just to, you know, because again, streamlining and consolidating that, that, that all makes sense. And so I, I, I don't have an objection to it. I just was very curious as to, you know, at some point it was, it was more frequent. Um, and presumably if we run into those types of challenges again, we, the future board can have that uh, reinstated. So thank you. Any additional questions, Regent Rosha? No, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Regent Powell. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to uh, really thank and acknowledge the good work of uh, of uh, Jason and the Secretary on this. We've gone from, I think we had 21 um, different reports when they started, many of them, um, you know, with multiple quarterly, some of them requirements. So, so actually, it was actually 35 reports um, and 35 separate agenda. Um, items and uh, through this work we get that down to 10 
very comprehensive, very uh, linked to strategic discussions, um, reports, and I, I think it's uh, it's I think it's really good work. And I just want to thank uh, the group who who worked on this. Yeah, big thanks to Mr. Langworthy and Executive Director Steves on preparing the recommendations for us and working with our stakeholders in all of this. So thank you. Anything else from the Regents? All right, there being no further discussion, uh, we appear ready to vote. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. All right, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Langworthy <laughs> and Mr. Steves. Okay. Our next item is action of proposed amendments to the Board of Regents policy namings. President Gable, will you please walk us through the proposed amendments before we turn to questions or comments? So President Gable, please proceed. Thank you, Chair Verhalen, Vice Chair Hipsch, and members of the committee. So good morning, everyone. This morning, we bring before you for action after lots of conversation, discussion, campus, system, and community consultation, uh, action for revised board namings policy. The changes we are proposing since your December review reflect valued and continued feedback across our university system and largely consist of language clarifications. I'll note this is new and complicated territory, and so I want to extend a particular thanks for the consultation and feedback that we've been receiving and have received. It's been critical and helpful for us to navigate something that has been of great importance to our entire community. So a particular note, we're suggesting that any request to rename, revoke, or retain a naming shall include only one significant university asset per request. It's one of the changes I was referring to that has occurred since December and that the president shall consider requests for retention of a naming three years before the 75th year, as opposed to three years before and after the 75th year of a naming in response to a well-considered written request guided by principles and factors specified in the draft policy. Otherwise, in consultation with Senate governance and the All University Honors Committee, the All U Honors Committee will establish a working group contingent on the board's action today made up of all University Honors Committee members and selected university experts to finalize criteria and operational aspects related to their work to support the implementation of the policy. They do expect their efforts to develop their parallel policies and operational aspects to take several months to complete. And so there will be a window before any review of a renamings or revocation or retention by the all universities honors committee would likely begin. So we can keep you posted on their progress. More broadly, I want to express my sincere appreciation to all of you and the university community for sharing your input perspectives and expertise with us. This has required patience and cooperation throughout the entire process. And I want to give an, a particular shout out, if I may call it that, to the All University Honors Committee for agreeing to take the lead on this important work. This is really cornerstone in our mission is to have this shared governance as part of the process. And so the policy before you today directly reflects that ideal and all of the invaluable consultation that has occurred from the Campus Divided Project to the President and Provost Advisory Committee on University History, to the Task Force on Building Names and Institutional History, to the charge of this board to the administration, to the work of our peers across the country that has inspired us, and to the important and countless feedback and consultation moments we've received from faculty, staff, students, alumni, affected communities, and community members. So it's in this spirit, Madam Chair, and with great acknowledgement of the shared work that I'll pause and welcome your feedback and questions. Thank you so much, President Gable. Uh, before I ask for questions or comments, is there a motion to recommend adoption of the proposed amendments to the Board of Regents policy namings? So moved. And is- Second. <laughs> beat me to it. So thanks so much. Uh, let's turn to discussion. Regent Roche, I understand you have some amendments that you want to introduce. Yeah, yes, Madam Chair. If you'd like me to do that now, I can do that now. And I believe Mr. Langworthy is passing them out for um, uh, your observation. And I would first like to thank the board staff. I sent uh, them an email um, with, with some of these um, topics and uh, um, they've done amazing work in a very short amount of time to assist in, in putting this into a form that 
um, makes it, I think, more digestible and understandable. Um, and I, I think I'm going to kind of take them on um, just one at a time if I can and, and uh, um, address them as it is. But uh, the first would be... Um, just Regent Rosha, just yes. briefly, I just want to make sure that all of the regents on um, virtually know that a copy of this has been emailed to them so that they can follow along with you today. So I just wanted to Thank state you. that and make sure everyone was aware of that. If, um, and please, I don't, please proceed. Should, keep, should I keep on rolling here uh, on the I assumption saw. that everyone's been able to... I saw heads nod, okay, so I believe, th I believe you. you can proceed. Thank you for that. Um, so the first, the first, and, and I apologize, this has been going on for quite some time, and, and um, unfortunately, sometimes you don't start to digest some of the stuff until you get to a form where you're, you're moving forward. But um, one of my observations when I was looking at this with respect to other policies and, and the, re the board's um, policy manual uh, is that um, I think as a matter of grace, retaining the name namings, even though we've now put forward a, um, a procedure for renamings um, is, is an appropriate move uh, for the board. Just as, as I mentioned in, in my correspondence, you know, we have a we have a policy on tenure, which also includes the process for revoking tenure, but we don't call it tenure and revocation of tenure. We just call it tenure. And so I, from my perspective, um, we, we, you know, clearly um, meet a need as we found for a few years ago to have a, an articulated policy for how to address a renaming request. Um, and, and, and that would, that is in here. So I, you know, my, my, my first motion would be to um, retain the name namings and strike the and renamings from the title of, of the policy that's before us. All right. Is there a second on that motion? Second. All right. Um, having heard your rationale, Regent Roche, is there anyone else who wants to speak to this moved amendment on the policy? Uh, President Gable. Um, Madam Chair, members of the committee, just for your information, the addition of renamings was largely as a result of the original charge from April of 2019 that indicated that the administration should prepare policy language related to renamings. And so this was added as an acknowledgement of the um, proposed completion and if passed, ultimate completion of that charge. That was the context. Thank you, President Gable. Uh, Regent Mayron. Yes, uh, for the reasons that uh, President Gable explained and the genesis of all of this work that has been done, um, which comes out of that charge to the president's office back in, I think it was 2000, either 18 or 19. I think it's very important to have the title include the uh, phrase and renamings uh, because I think it's important to acknowledge the issues that were raised and that this administration and the board has taken this matter uh, very seriously. So I would not be in favor of this amendment. Thank you, Regent Mehran. Uh, anything from any of the other regents? Regent Davenport. Thank you, Chair Verhalen. Um, Just a question. Are we taking this amendment as a whole with the other yellow or one at a time? On no, Regent Roche has only moved the changing of the title at this okay. point in time. Thank you for that point of clarification. Anything else? I'm sure. Um, if it's new, yes, go ahead. Well, in, in, in response to the, to the, the point, I, I appreciate uh, President Gable's um, commentary and, and understand that I, you know, from my standpoint, the, the policy part of the renamings is in the policy. I don't know that the board had you know, specifically charged to, to, to you know, for renaming or for renaming the rename the namings policy. And so that I would just say that from my standpoint, I would um, state that again, as a matter of grace and as a matter of um, focus, um, having a renamings component in it is very important. And I think it's very strong as it's provided here, but that leaving the, the policy named as namings um, is more appropriate for the, uh, the the original intent of honoring people through naming. So I would I would ask the members of the board to support the amendment. Anything else from any of the other regents? All right. Given the the direction and requests that were made to this board for the same reasons Regent Mayron stated, I'm going to not be supporting this amendment. But let's take a 
vote on this. All those in favor of the first Rosha amendment to change the name of the policy back to namings, please say aye. 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 That was all those in favor of the Rosha amendment to change it back to namings. Aye. 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 Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm seeing confused looks. So let's take a second. All those in favor of the red line sitting in front of you for the title of, for the policy title. Aye. 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 All those opposed. Aye. 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 Opposed. I think we're going to need to do a roll call on that. Uh, Mr. Erickson, are you ready for a roll call vote? You can just go to vision. Well, it's difficult with virtual. No, no, no. I thank you, Regent Spigum. I appreciate that. So the motion before us is to accept Regent Rocha's red line. <laughs> Maroon line, I guess I should call it, based on the color I'm looking at here, um, which would be to make the name of this policy namings only. So the motion we're voting on right now is to retain the name namings. Is there some please yes. proceed? <laughs> uh, Regent Davenport. Yes. Regent Davenport votes yes. Regent Farnsworth? Yes. Regent Farnsworth votes yes. Regent Hipsch? No. Regent Hipsch votes no. Regent Johnson? No. Regent Johnson votes no. Regent Kenyanya? Yes. Regent Kenyanya votes yes. Regent Mayron? No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent McMillan? No. Regent McMillan votes no. Regent Powell? No. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rosha? Yes. Regent Rosha votes yes. Regent Swiggum? No. Regent Swiggum votes no. Regent Taliurabi? Yes. Regent Taliurabi votes yes. Regent Verha or Chair Verhalen? Hello. No. <laughs> Chair Verhalen votes no. Okay. So by a vote of Five yes, seven no's. The Regent Amendment is the Rosha Amendment is not approved. Apologies, um, and we'll get better at this process as we go forward. All right. <laughs> uh, your next edit appears to be on page two. Um, I'm Madam Chair. I'm going to pass on that one. Okay. Um, that my my commentary there was in support of the comments that Regent Mayron had made on that same topic, and so um, I would I would ask you to move to page six. Thank you very much, Regent Rosha. Section seven, subdivision two. Um, and just to be clear, your edits in these uh, electronic copies are the ones that are highlighted in yellow, correct? Yes, that's my understanding, yes. Thank you. Um, if you look under subdivision two in the second bullet, um, and, I, and I apologize, this, is, this gets down to some pretty um, specific stuff, um, but when reading the sources and strength of the information of that behavior, the, the fact is this is a request to conduct a, an inquiry and uh, the way that it reads to me, to me anyway, and, and perhaps I may be a, um, an outlier, is that when it talks about information of that behavior, there's a presumption that that is, um, is, is, is fact. And, and when, when really it's a presentation of the, the, the basis for the belief that the, the person has engaged in behavior that would, or person or entity has engaged in behavior that would warrant a renaming. And so I simply wanted us to, to provide that the sources and strength at that point are being offered as evidence of the behavior and that that's part of what the request process is just to make sure that it's uh, um, following that that uh, that strain specifically and I would move that amendment. All right, so you are moving the red line is the maroon line. The edit is shown in bullet two subdivision two on page six. Is there a second? Second. And, the, and it's not, yeah, it's just simply the, the highlighted offered as evidence of that behavior. Thank you for that clarification. Are there any regents that wish to speak to this amendment? All right, just wanted to make sure we didn't have anyone online. Okay, 
I think Regent Mayron. Oh, my apologies, Regent Mayron. Thank you, Ms. Regent Farnsworth. Please proceed, Regent Mayron. Thank you, and uh, no apologies. I put my hand up at the last minute. Well, <laughs> so, some of these changes, um, you know, reasonable people could go either way on. What I'm very cognizant is, is that this uh, policy has gone through many, many consultations by the president's office with a variety of different constituencies who had uh, many, many policies from around the country um, before them to examine and to go through. And to be frank, I think um, at this point, I'm not prepared to change what they ultimately came up with unless there's a really good reason to do so. And I'm not suggesting that Regent Rocha, his reason, um, reasons that he's given is something to question, but I think that in some senses, what he's proposing is redundant. If someone is gonna address the sources and strength of the information of that behavior, they're clearly, when you read it, at least to me, they're gonna come forth with uh, what are the sources and what's the basis for saying that there is strength in what they're saying is bad behavior. So in deference to all of the work that the administration has done with all of the consultation of the various committees and the community, and the like, um, I'm going to vote against this amendment and feel that the language that is there covers uh, the concern that Regent Rocha has raised. Thank you, Regent Mayron. All right, seeing no other hands raised at this time, uh, we will move to a vote and Ms. Dirksen for clarity, just because we do have a number of regions online and here. Uh, if we could do a roll call vote. And so the motion is to adopt the offered as evidence phrase shown on the documents in front of us. Please proceed. Regent Davenport. Yes. Regent Davenport votes yes. Regent Farnsworth. Yes. Regent Farnsworth votes yes. Regent Hipsch. No. Regent Hipsch votes no. Regent Johnson. Regent Johnson votes no. Regent Kenyanya? No. Regent Kenyanya votes no. Regent Mayron? Regent Mayron? Regent Mayron. She's saying no, Wait. but she's on mute. No, oh, she no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Regent Mayron votes no. Regent McMillan? No. Regent McMillan votes no. Regent Powell? No. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rocha? Yes. Regent Rocha votes yes. Regent Swigum. No. Regent Swigum votes no. Regent Talurabe. No. Regent Talurabe votes no. Chair Halen. No. Chair Halen votes no. All right, by a vote of three yeses to nine noes, the Ro Rocha Amendment number two is not approved. Trying to Keep these all in order. My apologies. Please continue, Regent Rosha. Thank you, Madam Chair. And you know, and this this next one that's under subdivision three um, is is a, a bit more challenging um, from a, a dialogue standpoint because of the uh, the nature of it. It's it, it it's the the language that says neither the request nor the inquiry should constitute the primary basis for a finding of underlying harm. Um, and and where this comes from was in in our prior process and when when the you know the question about evidence of of um, behavior which can be very challenging when you look over many decades in the past um, when you know the some of the feedback that had come through was it, it it didn't matter whether the evidence was this is feedback that I'd gotten from members of the community as we talked about this was that it didn't really matter whether the, the individual had engaged in the behavior it was the perception that the person had and that that caused the harm um, and so we needed to rename the building because even if the person had never engaged in the negative behavior, um, it was, it, it, you know, there, there now was a, the, the process had created a, a, the perception of, of uh, improper behavior by that person and that that warranted a renaming. Um, and so from that standpoint, um, the, this, the, the point of this is to simply say that the process and the accusation or the allegation against an individual or, or an entity um, after whom a, a, an asset or a, uh, a program is named um, should should not be the basis for the underlying harm. I um 
I, I want to just as as I proceed on this, I want to just kind of I want to respond, and I didn't know if I should do it on the last item or, or now, but with respect to Regent Mayron's um, commentary on um, the the work that was provided, the work that's been done, which has clearly been remarkable, and in my email um, I stated that I think that the improvements in this have been dramatic over time, and I appreciate that. That said, I also with with the respect of a colleague um, on this board. Uh, took into consideration Regent Mayron's lengthy uh, proposal of amendment um, in that as we move forward and, and considered them on their merits, even though they came after that extensive work by those same people. So I would, I would ask that members of the board provide the same um, respect for consideration on the merits, um, but I guess the world is as it is. Um, I'm gonna move on to subdivision four, Madam Chair. I'm, and I'm going to put all three of these in the same motion because it appears the die is cast. So, um, uh, Regent Rosha, um, <laughs> for the sake of our staff and trying to keep track of things, I, I do want to be um, careful in making sure we're tracking where everything is. Um, I also you know, please, please go ahead. So if you could at the outset, identify which ones you're lumping together right now in this motion, so we can make sure that we capture them all. I think that would be really helpful um, just so we can keep all of those in context as Matt. you continue with your comments. Cause I don't want to miss something on, on such a detailed <laughs> document. So my apologies. Um, and yeah. Regent Kenyanya, I see your hand is raised but we're, I, I'm kind of in the middle of <laughs> allowing Regent Rosha to make his motion. And so I, I want to be very respectful of that. And uh, then we will come to you. Uh, I appreciate that. I would yield to Regent Kenyanya. Okay, please continue. Uh, please go ahead, Regent Kenyanya. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Regent Rosha. I was actually just going to request Regent Rosha to at least take this one separately. Um, Cause I know personally, I, I have different opinions on the two. Um, so if, if he could at least just take this one that he spoke on separately from the other. Um, Regent, um, I'm, okay. I'm sure. um, Regent Powell also well, had I was just raised. going, thank <laughs> you, thank you, thank you, Chair. I was just okay. going to um, support uh, Regent Ken, you know, Kenyana's uh, comment, which is, I think it's actually uh, quite helpful to take these um, one by one just to avoid, um, you know, confusion and different people may have different points of view. So I don't know what the chair's prerogative is here or versus the person making the motion, but uh, for what it's worth, I think it's really helpful to do them one by one. Yeah, the, the chair's prerogative would be that we continue to do them one by one. Um, if, and if, if you would prefer to do them all together, I will allow you to, but my preference would be to continue to approach these one by one um, so that we have a very clear record of what was and was not adopted and allow the regents the opportunity to respond to these as we did just receive these this week. So I okay. would I would appreciate that. I will, I will happily oblige uh, Madam Chair um, and to avoid people from having to move to separate them, I will just separate them at the outset. And thank you. <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, thank you, Madam Chair, if I may. Please. So the next one then would be back to subdivision three on page six. Thank you. And it's the highlighted language that says neither the request nor the inquiry should constitute the primary basis for a finding of underlying harm. And I, I have spoke to this already um, in that it is the, the accusation itself will create a perception in the public um, of, of a harm and that, 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 that the decision by the uh, by the committee should be based on the actual <clears throat> actions of the person or entity that's being considered from a, from a renaming context. And I would move that amendment. All right, is there a second? Second. Very good. Any regents wish to comment on Rosha amendment number three? Madam Chair. Regent Spigum. Madam Chair and Regent Rosha, I'm just trying to put this all in perspective. This. Uh, request here of uh, the amendment at subdivision three. Um, I had some difficulty, as you know, with the uh, original three years ago uh, research that was done by the committee that brought forward some of the research. And it almost seemed like people were guilty before proved guilty. I don't know if that's a concept which we uh, 
um, are working with here or not. But would that be similar here that you're not guilty just because of the request coming forward? Um, Regent Rochester. Madam Chair, Sorry. thank you. Yes, the, the point is that is that um, the, the the inquiry itself can cast an aspersion on somebody where they appear. I they, think it did. It did, and they where they appear as though they are guilty of the action even before there's a, a full review, and so it means that that the, the, the determination of whether there is harm has to be based on the actual behavior that's identified and proven in the process, um, not the as you say the appearance of being guilty means you're guilty. That's what this is getting at. So, Madam Chair, uh, maybe a question of you. Do you see this as uh, significant to the point that we'd have to go back through the committees again, the consultative committees, and get a, their nod, their approval? Uh, I, I remember being here three years ago, about this time right now, three years ago, and feeling that people were, uh, just because they were uh, named in the four naming is to take the name off the building that they were guilty before even uh, you know brought to uh, justice and I, I had a bad feeling about that so um regent swigum and president gable if you'd like to weigh in on any of this please let me know but um i have a, a series of thoughts on that i was not sitting at this table at that point in time however uh, a, a sentence like this brings about a new series of questions for me. Um, neither the request nor the inquiry should constitute the primary basis for a finding of underlying harm. To me, raises the question of whether we're changing some sort of standard of evidence or standard of culpability um, in how we are asking the honors committee to look at things. Instead, we are asking our university community in this new policy, we're asking our, our university community to allow the honors committee on the time basis to consider the namings of our significant assets and whether those should be renamed in honor of someone else or continue in the way they are. Additionally, this policy is bringing forward a process in which a member of our university community and I use that term very broadly because it is a broad community, can bring forward to the committee or the president can on his or her own initiative bring forward a request to that committee to consider a renaming. This policy as written requires that each of those requests be separated. So there is not a tying together or unintentional tying together of individuals, buildings, names, time periods, et cetera. And that the honors committee is asked to consider each of those individually as they stand within the guardrails and um, guidelines that we will have given them under this policy. To answer your question directly, Regent Sviggum, I don't believe I am in a position to answer that question of whether this needs to go back to them. However, I, I don't feel this sentence serves this policy and its intent in the way. One sentence saying that it shall not constitute the basis for finding of underlying harm is already encompassed in subdivision two where the specific behavior has to be considered and whether it jeopardizes the mission of the university. And that recommendation will then come forward <laughs> to this body from the all university honors committee based on what they have determined. And I apologize that I can't answer that question for you, but I'm not in a position to do that. And so are there any other regents who'd like to see? Madam Chair. Um, uh, Regent Sigam, if you'd like to reflect on what I said, I apologize. I'm just trying to reflect upon myself rather than upon what you said. Um, just upon myself, I remember sitting here and the um, the feeling of the community or of many was that just because these four persons and their four uh, buildings were named in a uh, consideration to remove their names, that they were they were guilty of something. And I think this sentence, this is a clarification that this request itself does not mean that 
they're they're guilty or that there's reason or evidence there for uh, for removal of the name. Uh, am I making myself clear, Mr. Roche, or Regent Roche? Or? I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with this one, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, and one one distinction I would pr provide is in, in re response to the the chair's commentary is, it doesn't say the basis for a finding; it's the primary basis. So it's not that it isn't part of the consideration of how the community has reacted, but there has to be an underlying proof of of behavior that that has to be the primary basis for the renaming. Um, but that if the only reason that you would seek to rename is that there was a, or that shouldn't say the only, but the primary reason is because there was. Um, the 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 presumption or the the appearance of guilt based on the on the review. On the request. Yeah, that's that's exactly what this is going for, Mr. Uh, Regent Spigum. Yeah, and I think to my point, that's already addressed in subdivision two bullets one through four that lay out how the honors committee needs to consider things. So, uh, any other regents want to speak to this amendment? Uh, ma um, so, Chair uh, Regent Mayron, and then Regent Powell. Thank you. Um, when I look at this policy to all together, to me, subdivision three is telling the honors committee how to conduct their business. Um, that's the purpose of that uh, subdivision. Subdivision two and subdivision four, but and in particular subdivision four lays out the factors that the uh, honors committee is to consider in connection with a request. And as you can see, it doesn't, um, none of those factors either in subdivision four or the bullets that are in subdivision two uh, um, talk about, and I don't think it would be appropriate to talk about that merely because a request was made that somehow that that will drive the outcome. So for me, th this provision is unnecessary. Um, it certainly, in my view, doesn't belong in subdivision three. But I don't think that it's necessary in that we have put the guardrails around the honors committee as to what they need to consider, what factors they should consider, and they're laid out in subdivision four. And so I'm satisfied that this um, additional sentence offered by Regent Rocha is not necessary. Thank you, Regent Mayor and Regent Powell. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Verhalen. Um, uh, not a, not a lawyer, um, and so I'm finding this a little bit murky. But I mean, it just seems to me that you know, once a, an inquiry is initiated, you know, there may or may not be a perception. But in in a way, the die is cast. So I I don't know that we can really do anything about how different groups might perceive an inquiry an inquiry. Um, so that's the first point. But the second one is is that you know ultimately these uh, these things will be decided by the Board of Regents, you know, who have the ultimate authority here, which you know gives me you know great comfort in some of these um, subtle points. Madam Chair. Regents Vigam. Madam Chair, I'm sorry, but this is uh... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not a lawyer either. I'm a seed farmer, okay? I'm just trying to figure out my feelings here and the perception that people have. Regent Mayrun's um, comments about uh, subdivision two and subdivision four and how they hold together with the inquiry or the request are very helpful, Regent Mayrun, very helpful. I think that uh, that helps put it together for me. Um, I, I just want to make sure that... Uh, just because there's a request, there's not a, that perception of guilt or perception of uh, something being wrong has. Back, Madam Chair, could I ask Regent McMillan a question? I'd like his uh, I'd like his advice on this because he was sitting in that chair, if I remember correctly, when we dealt with this three years ago. And Regent McMillan, I'm I'm looking to you, uh, my my elder for no, not my. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> my leader that time for advice on this. I, I think you know where I'm coming from, Regent McMillan, and the perception that was there that day or that month uh, when we dealt with it. And I just, I, I would just want to make sure that the inquiry doesn't mean wrong, doesn't mean guilt, uh, that the uh, request doesn't mean uh, guilt. Uh, help clarify it for me if you would, Regent McMillan. Regent McMillan, if you would like to respond. Thank you, Chair Verhalen. I thought I'd stayed out of the room long enough to <laughs> this. Uh, apologize for my uh, late arrival, but I have been participating from the beginning and nothing, nothing 
in my experience as a region is quite as crystally uh, etched in my mind as uh, what we went through in 2019. Um, Excuse me. So let me, Regent, before you go on, I think I spoke wrong. I don't think you were sitting there. I think you were in the hospital. I was, thank you, Chair Swig. I was here for the original debate and the second debate. I was not here for the, uh, the third time through. So I was next door at, uh, anyway. As best I can answer that, I, I think that uh, Regent Powell and Regent uh, Mayeron have captured my perspective on this. Yes, the creation of an inquiry creates some kind of a perspective and a perception. And I don't think that the language that Regent Rocha, while I respect it and understand it, I don't know that it changes anything. I kind of land where, 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 where Regent Powell did a few moments ago, and that is that uh, we'll ultimately have to make the decision. And if somebody brings a request forward, I think the public and the people that watch our processes are going to draw their own conclusions and what our policy says as to whether that existence of an inquiry is somehow, you know, damning in nature. I, I don't know what we do about that. I don't think we can. And I don't think this language helps for me if I was on the sidelines watching this that, uh, oh, wow, somebody felt that this person, you know, didn't, uh, has a track record that uh, we need to rethink. I, I don't know how we change that. If it happens, it happens. And we have to do our best job to come up with a solution at that point in time. The issue that uh, you're remembering, Regent Swiggum, is you're remembering it correctly. But I don't know that if this had been in our policy at that point, it would have made any difference whatsoever in 2019 and it doesn't in 2022. So I'm going to, I won't support this change. Okay. Uh, last, we'll go to Regent Farnsworth. Thank you, thank you, Chair Verhalen, really briefly. And thank you for leading us through this, by the way. I know it's <laughs> complicated, so really do appreciate your leadership on this. Um, I, I was also here. I was certainly not sitting here, but I was sitting over there um, on the aisle um, in April 2019 for um, said meeting um, and would agree that this was certainly a dynamic um, at play. Um, however, I appreciate that we've had this conversation. I appreciate Regent Rocha bringing this up as a topic, but I would actually, um, from a policy placement standpoint, I was um, persuaded by what Regent Mayron said um, about placement and then what Regent Powell said about um, the Board of Regents, you know, that that's, we're kind of the, the ultimate check or the end of the process. And if there was a significant um, red flag around, you know, what a pro perhaps that the calling of the question in a certain situation um, was being viewed as the primary basis um, for um, finding underlying harm in an inquiry that I would hope we'd be able to address that um, at the time. So I wanted to thank you and then also um, say that I um, will not be supporting um, this particular amendment, but appreciate Regent Rocha bringing it up and the conversation that we've had. Thank you, Regent Farnsworth. So we will, Ms. Matt, Dirksen, if you can Madam, move on, we're Madam, gonna call, Ma we're gonna Madam call Madam Chair, it's traditional. It's traditional to permit the, the movement. Regent Rocha, I apologize. It is the prerogative of the chair and we are going to call. This is outstanding, thank you. We're gonna call the Rocha Amendment to add the sentence to subdivision three. Ms. Dirksen? Regent Davenport. Yes. Regent Davenport votes yes. Regent Farnsworth. No. Regent Farnsworth votes no. Regent Hipsch. No. Regent Hipsch votes no. Regent Johnson. No. Regent Johnson votes no. Regent Kenyanya. Yes. yes. Regent Kenyanya votes yes. Regent Mayron. No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent McMillan. No. Regent McMillan votes no. Regent Powell. Sorry, no. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rocha. Yes. Regent Rocha votes yes. Regent Swiggum. Yes. Regent Swiggum votes yes. Regent Tao Rabe. No. Regent Tao Rabe votes no. Chair Verhalen. No. Chair Verhalen votes no. So by a vote of four to eight, the Rocha Amendment number three is not approved. Please continue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, complying with the directive to maintain uh, individual uh, motions, which um, is challenging at this point. Um, I would, the next one is under subdivision 4A. 
And this is just a practical matter um, with respect to uh, the standard. Um, and bridging off of the commentary from our colleague, Regent Mayron, uh, and others uh, on the previous um, proposal, I would point out that our job as a board is to ensure that the committee that we are charging to consider these things understands these standards and saying that these are things that we can fix at the board because the board ultimately decides, I feel is disrespectful because the, by the time the work has been done on that individual review, um, we should at least have given them the strongest guidance we can on ensuring that they're focusing on the, the concepts that we think are important. For instance, subdivisions two and four are precisely why I was proposing the previous language because it talks about uh, whether the naming exemplifies the highest aspirations, which can be affected by the in investigation. And number C, in letter C says, to the extent that retaining a name creates an environment that has an effect. <clears throat> That's what it gets at. It's providing clarity and having been part of a number of committees that have uh, gone through and created standards. Um, I've, we've never been part of one where we punt on the basis that we can just fix it in the final determination. In this case, the proposal is to remove the word highest from aspirations of the institution's mission. As the committee is considering whether to retain a name, and this is gonna be based against some evidence of some wrongdoing by the uh, namesake of the building. Um, and those are gonna have different degrees. You're gonna have strength in evidence. You're gonna have less strong evidence. You're gonna have bad behavior. You're gonna have worse behavior. Those are all gonna be subjective analyses that are gonna to have to be conducted. But once you've determined that there should be some concept of naming, of, of, a, of a renaming, whether or not the naming is the highest aspirations of the institution is a standard that is exceptionally difficult to meet. For instance, if there is a modest amount of misconduct perhaps, or, or a less severe form of misconduct that has been, has been determined by um, uh, less strong evidence, would a local architect uh, who about again, after whom a building has been named represent the highest aspirations of the University of Minnesota. There's a very broad range of people who have buildings named after them at the university. We have an administrator with whom I worked and had great affection, who was only here for a year and a half and has a building named after him. Does that represent the highest aspiration? I think that being consistent with the aspirations of the institution's mission or exemplifies our adherence to the university's mission, that, that is a better description. Because if you get to the point where you have to meet the very highest aspiration for every single naming, I think there are a lot of buildings on campus now that would not necessarily reach that standard and would, would provide a basis for a renaming, even though uh, the other components of this analysis are not met. So that's what I would move, Madam Chair. Thank you, Regent Rosha. Is there a second? Second. All right. Is there a discussion on this? And uh, President Gable, is there anything specific to this? If not, um, but I do want to let you know at any point in time, if there's background that would be helpful, please let us know, Regent Stigham. Well, Madam Chair, I, I apologize for maybe not have done my homework and read the Rocha amendments beforehand. If we did get them previous yes. as we did, and I didn't get a chance to read them. Um, while I members was warm to the last amendment and quite warm to that because of the perception of an inquiry, I have now read the entire Rocha amendments and it seems to be um, raising such a high standard uh, that uh, there would be no renaming that would probably ever be done. Uh, taken together, all of them put together. Um, it seems to me to be an extremely, incredibly high bar as you look at subdivision four, the suggested changes in uh, C and in D especially. Um, I want the university to be of the, the most excellence we can be, and that includes naming of buildings. So I, I would be against this amendment and the totality of the amendments as they come together and the chilling it would affect it would have on any renaming effort, the impossibility of it, I would think was, is wrong. So I'm gonna be opposing the amendment. Any other regions? Thank you so much, uh, Regent Powell. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Chair Verhalen. 
Um, just a you know, quick one here. I mean, exceptionality is one of the guiding principles and you know, we just, you know, we are really looking to, for, you know, distinguished individuals, whether it's highest aspiration or aspirations isn't, I don't know, but I, I do think that we should be protecting um, the principle of exceptionality. And in, in my view, the words highest aspirations, you know, is supportive of that. Um, look, there's plenty, there's room for, for interpretation in all of these. And I think that, you know, future boards will do that, but I would be opposed to this amendment for those reasons. Thank you, Regent Mayron. Uh, I think that, that uh, both Regent Spigum and Regent Powell expressed my views on this. I, the whole thrust of these namings issue is we are talking about people uh, honorary names, namings after people who have made extraordinary contributions to the university. That's what this is designed to capture. And I think um, anything that would water that down uh, or dilute that I think would uh, take away from it. So I will not support the proposed amendment adding the word or deleting the word highest. Thank you. All right. Um, sorry, just one second. <clears throat> I did, I had gone back to look at the original policy. We've seen so many maroon lined versions of this over the last few months that I had gone back to the original namings policy and in there and the guiding principles, it states that the naming um, needs to be consistent with the highest standards of the university. And, you know, that um, thrust going forward of the, pol of the policy as it's existed since 2010 and the continuing policy um, I feel is, is of importance. Um, and so that is why I won't be supporting this amendment, but Ms. Dirksen, Dirksen excuse me, please proceed with calling the roll. Regent Davenport. No. Regent Davenport votes no. Regent Farnsworth. No. Regent Farnsworth votes no. Regent Hipsch. No. Regent Hipsch votes no. Regent Johnson. No. Regent Johnson votes no. Regent Kenyanya. No. Regent Kenyanya votes no. Regent Mayron. No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent McMillan. No. Regent McMillan votes no. Regent Powell. No. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rosha. Yes. Regent Rocha votes yes. Regent Swigum. No. Regent Swigum votes no. Regent Tawi Rabe. No. Regent Tawi Rabe votes no. Chair Verhalen. No. Chair Verhalen votes no. All right. By a vote of one to 11, the Rocha Amendment is not, Rocha Amendment number four is not approved. Please continue, Regent Rocha. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the next, uh, there's, I guess, two left. Um, I would be happy to do them jointly as uh, I think that would be saving time, but if the preference is to continue to handle them individually, I'll do that just as well. Collecting merit badges along the way, apparently. I, the substantially in front of impairs, as I stated in, in my uh, email explanation to the board office, I substantially feel, feels like it's too strong but I was struggling to find a better word. And the reason being that the absence of any descriptor to the level of the impairment leaves it at such a low standard um, that it, it you know, becomes um, uh, you know, almost a, a non-standard uh, to itself. Um, and with respect to the, the commentary that the proposed amendments make it impossible to have any building renamed, I would strongly disagree with that. Um, in fact, um, had had the research, uh, had my time over at the Minnesota History Center uncovered evidence that supported the allegations against the people that were up for um, consideration of renaming, had that borne evidence that the allegations were true, I would have found those under this standard um, to, to merit a renaming uh, under the circumstances. I believe that they would not have met the aspirations of the institution. I believe that they would not have uh, they would have substantially impaired uh, large numbers of students in with respect to their uh, educational experience. 
Uh, but that I think that if, if, without have, with, it's simply a matter of anyone claiming an impairment. It's very subjective. It's a very low standard. And it puts the board and the committee in a, in a difficult spot um, as to whether, uh, whether a renaming is, is validated. If, uh, I mean, anticipating one of the counter arguments and, and you know, again, it's a, this is an interesting exercise, but um, to say that, well, the president wouldn't move something forward if there wasn't a substantial impairment or otherwise um, lead, will lead some folks um, to be concerned about whether they're getting equal access to this, this, this consideration, but that, you know, demonstrating that there's, a, that there's a more meaningful impact on somebody because of uh, the nature of the allegations and the proof of those, of the bad behavior. I think that serves the committee better. And I think that it creates a standard that will be more accurate in reflecting what we're looking for, um, for the times that we would rename a building based on these principles. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move this amendment. For clarity, are you, are you moving for C and D's revisions or only for C at this time? You asked that I do them one at a time, so it is only C. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Commission Swiggum. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is important stuff. You Absolutely. Know? And uh, Madam Chair, I, uh, I, I tend to disagree with my... Uh, colleague, uh, Regent Rocha, as I read through all the amendments. I think it uh, specifically three years ago, I don't think the case was made to change the names of those four buildings. I think it was wrongly brought forward and probably not substantiated the way it ought to. But Regent Rocha, you cannot say that reading through the series of amendments you have here doesn't significantly or greatly change the process uh, for, for any renaming, it, it changes it, it, this uh, standard extremely, extremely high. And uh, I disagree with your, your comment that it does not significantly change the process. And my guess is not only uh, does it significantly change the process, but my guess is this would all have to go back again through the committees that President Gable had set up and that through it's been filtered and vetted. Uh, so I speak against this amendment as well as the next one, and I won't bother speaking on the next one. I'm not going to hold you to that, Regent Swigum. <laughs> Regent Mayron. I, I, Regent Rocha, I certainly understand what you're trying to do by adding that word substantially. Uh, and I understand why you would struggle with what's the appropriate word to use. But to be frank, I don't think it improves the task of the Honors Committee in terms of what they have to consider. Uh, what, they are being told to look to see if there is an impairment. Uh, but the good news is for me is that they have, it's embedded among other factors that the Honors Committee must look at as well. So it's not a standalone provision that will drive the outcome. So I don't think that adding that language makes it any easier or improves uh, on the matter. Um, and so for those reasons, I will be voting against the proposed amendment. Any other regions wish to speak on this? Mm, amendment number five. All right, Ms. Dirksen, uh, would you please call the vote on the Rocha Amendment to add the word substantially to subdivision 4C? Regent Davenport. No. Regent Davenport votes no. Regent Farnsworth. No. Regent Farnsworth votes no. Regent Hipsch. No. Regent Hipsch votes no. Regent Johnson. No. Regent Johnson votes no. Regent Kenyanya. No. Regent Kenyanya votes no. Regent Mayron. No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent McMillan. No. Regent McMillan votes no. Regent Powell. No. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rosha. Yes. Regent Rosha votes yes. Regent Swigum. No. Regent Swigum votes no. Regent Tao Rabe. No. Regent Tao Rabe votes no. Chair Verhalen. No. Chair Verhalen votes no. Right. So by a vote of one to 11, the Rocha Amendment number five is not approved. Uh, Regent Rocha, Section D. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. <clears throat> um, Got to be setting some kind of a record here, Mr. Steves. Uh, <clears throat> with with respect to this, I I, I, I do have to come back to, I, I, I would appreciate um, as we have these kinds of dialogues and it's actually refreshing that we're having a dialogue about policy. 
um, in, 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 in an open forum. Um, but I, I, would, I would rather not have words put in my mouth um, and I would rather not have um, the effect on my determinations being um, uh, predicted for me. I, I don't believe that these um, provisions would have stopped a renaming had the facts been proven. And this is a transition into this language. Uh, the fact is, if it had been determined that in the this last century, in the 20th century, we had a president who had been openly advocating for segregation or had been enforcing segregation in university housing as opposed to seeking ways of moving forward with integration, which was the case by the evidence that I discovered. If they had been pushing and, and, and reinforcing that on a racial basis at a time when other institutions had been moving forward with integration, I would have found even with all of the changes that I have put forward that that would have warranted a renaming of, of any of those buildings if that were the case. Uh, the purpose of this is, in, in, I'll read it, in evaluating the culpability of the individual or non-university entity for wrongful behavior, the Honors Committee shall recognize the time and cultural context in which the behavior occurred. It only requires a recognition of it. It does not require it to control. And the, the very fact is, if we don't if we don't recognize the cultural context, I would suggest, and in fact, I think some may on this board may invite that virtually every building that was named after somebody before perhaps 1960 um, would warrant a renaming. Because in the context, you're gonna find that it was generally a single gender enterprise and all leadership surrounding these, you know, the, those very individuals were of a single gender. Contextually, that was what was almost universal in the world and, and uh, was not perceived in the same way that we perceive it now as being an injustice. So be that as it may, I would move the, the, the amendment and uh, welcome your commentary. Thank you, Regent Rocha. Is there a second? Second. All right, any regents wish to comment? Regent Powell. Uh, thank you, Chair Verhalen. Um, for me, um, the sentences above um, in uh, uh, subdivision four, section D, the sentences that say the, you know, the case, you know, will be strongest when there's clear and unambiguous documentation, uh, when we have really gone and have the totality of the public and private record and actions. I mean, those to me are the, would be the, you know, the focus of the work of the, of the, uh, of, of the committee. And, um, uh, you know, there's, there's, I guess that, you know, there is, there's context, but I would prefer that the committee bring forward the case and the data and the information. And um, I, I really rely a, a lot here on the board to, uh, you know, interpret and decide whether the, the, data, the data and information is strong enough. And if the committee, if the board wants to consider cultural context, but that becomes, that becomes I think, a, a difficult interpretation for the committee. And my, I, I like the focus. Uh, here that what we're at, we want the committee to do is to bring us documentation um, uh, and, uh, and, then, and then let the board uh, take it from there. Thank you, Regent Mayron. Thank you. I think that this issue regarding uh, the cultural context or the history, uh, I think is captured in subdivision six. Uh, of the policy, which talks about uh, if there is a recommendation for renaming that the president would come forward with a plan for contextualization and potential erasure and to communicate historical information. So I, I think the concept of, um, of this, of the history or the culture at the time when a particular honorary naming is uh, was made will be captured if needed in subdivision six. I don't think it uh, fits or belongs here as a consideration by the committee. I'm confident it will come up uh, as to how it is that an individual uh, got the nod for an honorary naming at a particular point in time and what was going on. But 
uh, mandating that the committee, the honors committee, recognize that time and culture as part of their deliberations, I think is inappropriate. I, I also think that this issue is one that was clearly on the table with the various committees that uh, the administration consulted with. There are other policies that we looked at that talked about the historical context and, and the cultural background behind a naming. Um, and it's very evident to me that um, this po proposed policy, which is the consequence of all that work was that was done by those various committees, is that the committees and the administration was saying that the uh, cultural context or historical context should not drive the determination of whether uh, wrongful conduct in fact incur occurred and whether a renaming should take place. So I, I think the matter about history and culture gets captured under subdivision six. Uh, I don't think it belongs here and I will oppose the amendment. Thank you, Regent Farnsworth. Thank you, Chair Verhalen, um, to this amendment and to um, some of Regent Mayron's um, points. Uh, I think the amendment, uh, I would agree um, in terms of the um, history part that Regent Mayron was just talking about, that certainly um, in subdivision six, um, which promotes a broad representation of, of university history is the quote there. Um, and that certainly is linked to what the honors committee would be bringing forward. Um, I think that adding Regent Rocha's amendment um, in subdivision four, section D adds a finer point to that. And I don't think it's suggesting that the cultural context and time would be a driving factor, uh, but I think it adds a finer point to it. And, and as someone who you know very well might be at um, this table um, when a proposal comes forward in the future under this new policy, um, that is information that I think is important, um, that would be important for the board to have and should be part of the honors committee con or presentation, not suggesting that it wouldn't. I think I think others are very um, right that this kind of information would more likely than not come through um, whatever presentation that the honors committee is making. But I think Regent Rocha's um, amendment puts a finer point on that and I'll be supporting it for that reason. Thank you, Chair Verhalen. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Regent Rocha. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just, just in you know, following the commentary, that that's very much the point. There is a debate um, when it comes to renaming, and um, as for those that were on the board at the time when we went through this process, um, I spent a lot of time looking at what was happening across the country, what the debate was, sort of generally in the, in the media, um, in the professional journals, and there's a big question about whether context matters or whether we should, you know, as some would argue, the highest uh, evaluation, and that's the language that's being used here, um, provides that context doesn't matter. It's what do we aspire to today? I, I think that there's an, I think that's an, un, a, 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 an unfortunate standard because I, I do think that there's a tremendous advantage of hindsight and being able to look back over time and make decisions about how somebody should have acted at a time where they were living in a different environment with different standards, mores, and so on. So this is, I'm, I'm taking the position here that, that it does not exempt people from bad behavior, but that there at least is a basis for considering what were the circumstances of the time to, to leave this person to, be, to act, operate, behave in a certain way. And, and that that is something that at least should be con considered in the context. There are those that don't think it should be, I think it should be, and that's why I proposed the amendment. Thank you. All right, not seeing anyone else. Uh, Ms. Dirksen, will you please call the roll on Rosha Amendment number six to add that sentence to the end of 4D as in Delta? Regent Davenport. No. Regent Davenport votes no. Regent Farnsworth. Yes. Regent Farnsworth votes yes. Regent Hipsch. No. Regent Hipsch votes no. Regent Johnson. No. Regent Johnson votes no. Regent Kenyanya. No. Regent Kenyanya votes no. Regent Mayron? No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent McMillan? No. Regent McMillan votes no. Regent Powell? No. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rosha? Yes. Regent Rosha votes yes. Regent Swiggum? Oh. Regent Swiggum votes no. Regent Taurabe? No. Regent Taurabe votes no. Chair Verhalen? No. Chair Verhalen votes no.
right, with a vote of two, two to 10, uh, Rosha amendment number six is not approved. Are there any other amendments? Regent Rosha? That's the whole shebang, Madam Chair. Right. Thank you for everyone's um, patience as we walked through that. Um, I know it was tedious, so thank you, uh, but wanted to make sure we were clear on, on each of our steps. So we are back to uh, the motion and second that were first made, which is for um, the Board of Regents policy namings and renamings uh, as presented by President Gable. Are there any comments on that, Regent Farnsworth? Thank you, Trevor Halen. And just wanted to thank President Gable and her team. This has been a long time coming. Um, and I think this is really good work. Um, and thank the very vast shared governance apparatus that has been through this. Um, and looking forward to seeing the policy in action. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Regent Farnsworth. Regent Rosha. Madam Chair, um, would Regent Mayor on yield to a question. <laughs> Depends what the question is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that means she'll yield to a question, yeah. but yeah, perhaps not so. an answer. Yes. Yes, so I, do you want do you want me to break this out into individual questions or can I just ask them all? Well, I'm just kidding. Um, Re Regent Mayron, you would you would raise the question about the definition of gift um, and the fact that the, the language that is, I believe, before us um, uh, does not uh, recognize the, the value of a, of a naming as, a, as something of value um, and as a benefit rather. Um, and I would be interested in General Counsel Peterson's perspective on, on this, whether there's, a, 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 whether there's something that could be used to revise that language. I had, I had proposed some language. I don't certainly wasn't very invested in it, um, but just as a practicality, we, we have mm -hmm. substantial value in naming rights in, in a commercial setting. And, and obviously um, uh, gifts are made with an expectation of naming. Um, and so just wondering whether that's something that would warrant clarification um, and whether uh, Regent Mayron, whether you feel that's something that we should pursue and whether um, Mr. Peterson would have some thoughts on that. Thank you. Regent Mayron, let's start with you. Sure. Um, I, I do think that it is worth taking a look at that language on gifts and sponsorships. In fact, um, doing some more digging on this, I learned that there is a Board of Regents policy on gift solicitation and acceptance, and there's also an administrative policy called accepting and managing gifts in that administrative policy. Actually, there is a definition for gifts in there, and there's a definition for sponsorships. And I think that um, with the benefit of those two policies, I think we could do a better job of defining what is meant by a gift and what is a, a meant by a scholarship. So I, 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 I don't think it, it can happen today because we don't have any language and I'm very comfortable adopting the current policy um, as proposed by uh, President Gable. Uh, that said, I do think um, it would be uh, useful if President Gable and her office were to take a look at those policy statements, uh, both on the administrative policy and the Board of Regents policy, and make sure that we've got definitions that are consistent with those policies and draw on them. They, they do a much better job, to be frank, uh, particularly the administrative policy in terms of defining what's a gift and what is a um, a, a sponsorship. So I think we could benefit by cleaning up those two definitions, but it shouldn't hold up the adoption of today's <coughs> policy is my view. Thank you, Regent Mayron. Um, for, uh, as a point of clarification, um, subdivision three gift and subdivision five sponsorship in the version that is before us in the motion are the same as defined in our 2010, excuse me, are the same as the base policy on which these revisions were added. Is that correct, President Gable? Um, Madam Chair, I would need to, con I would need to phone a friend to confirm. <laughs> 
Oh, um, perhaps your friend is yes. right, <laughs> right to my left, Mr. <laughs> Executive Madam, Director. Madam Steve. Chair, the, the two definitions that uh, that Regents Rocha and Mayron are referencing have had no amendments during this process. Okay. So they are the existing definitions that have been in place. Okay. And Regent Rocha, did you still have a question for General Counsel Peterson? M Madam Chair, I if if I can just make my last commentary on the on the resolution as a whole or on the policy as a whole. Please. I think it obviates that. Um, yeah, I, I would, you know, obviously I'd prefer that, that, you know, when we make a major revision that we get all of those points, but I understand, you know, where we're at and I understand the dynamic of the, of the current board. So um, I, and I, you know, I'm, I'm deeply appreciative of all the work that's gone in. I think that the, uh, the improvements are, are really substantial and I think that they would have made, um, would have um, likely made life a lot um, better when we went through this process where we were as, an, as a, a community trying to deal with this issue without any real clarity on how to handle it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to support the, the policy as, as it is in the absence of, of some of the, um, of the provisions that we, we went through and were rejected only because I, I believe that we still are lacking I, I think there's a, I think we have a standard challenge. I think we have a clarity challenge. And I think that um, uh, I, I you know, very much hope uh, that I'm wrong, um, but, but I think that we could have a, a process where there are expectations um, based on what is in the policy and also what is not in the policy um, uh, that would, would, I think, justifiably create frustration on the part of people bringing actions um, or bringing requests for renaming uh, on the basis of what's in front of them. I think they have every right to expect um, a response to to what they're bringing forward, um, even if I wouldn't necessarily think that what is brought forward uh, is or is not um, a basis for a renaming. So uh, that that is, you know, uh, I'm very much appreciative of, of the vast majority of what's there. I just think there are a couple of challenges that that will um, at some point in time manifest themselves for for this board. And if there's one thing I don't like to do is to kick uh, problems down the road to future boards, uh, if there's an opportunity to address them now. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Regent McMillan. Thank you, Chair Verhalen. Um, having had the opportunity to lead the board and co-lead this university community through a very difficult, and I'll use the term bruising period in 2019, I want to agree with something Regent Rocha just said, and that is that the presence of this policy would have helped immeasurably through that process. And, and uh, while it's not perfect, it's, it's a, a far improvement on, on where we found ourselves then. So I wanna thank President Gable. I wanna thank uh, members of this board who have worked very hard, yourself included, Chair, the former chair of this committee um, at a point when uh, Regent Rocha chaired this committee, that's just a ton of work by the administration, by the university community, and by members of this board to bring us to the point we are today. So not perfect, but awfully good and a huge improvement. So thanks for your last comment, Regent Rocha. Any other regents wish to speak on this motion? I also want to echo the appreciation, President Gable, to you and the university community that engaged in this process. Um, I know it was long, <laughs> and at times I am sure there were some very uh, difficult but important conversations that were had around building this policy. And uh, much like uh, any well developed engineering project, it was iterative and appreciate your partnership and, and the partnership of all of the regents in getting us here and, and Chair Mayron and prior Chair Rocha as well for this committee. Um, I see a, a policy before us that is built on the existing namings foundational policy with significant improvements, um, not to overuse that word, but improvements that will provide the university community broadly, but specifically the all honor, all university honors committee with direction from us as to if these, uh, as these come up by age, as built, existing buildings come up by age, as items may be brought to their attention or the president's attention related to existing namings, 
to consider in bringing forward their recommendations to us as the body to make the final decision. And as this process proceeds, I see a second step of iteration in this, which is as these materials start coming forward to us as the governing body to make the final decision, it is in our prerogative to ask for more detail, to request more information, to dig into some of these details, and then if necessary, to make changes to this policy as we go forward, um, even outside the six year review process for our board policies. So uh, with that, Ms. Dirksen, would you please call a roll call vote on the motion before us, which is the Board of Regents policy namings and renamings as presented by uh, President Gable. Regent Davenport. Yes. Regent Davenport votes yes. Regent Farnsworth. Yes. Regent Farnsworth votes yes. Regent Hipsch. Yes. Regent Hipsch votes yes. Regent Johnson. Yes. Regent Johnson votes yes. Regent Kenyanya. Yes. yes. Regent Kenyanya votes yes. Regent Mayron. Yes. Regent Mayron votes yes. Regent McMillan. Yes. Regent McMillan votes yes. Regent Powell. Yes. Regent Powell votes yes. Regent Rosha. No. Regent Rosha votes no. Regent Swigum. Yes. Regent Swigum votes yes. Regent Taurabe. Yes. Regent Todd Robbie votes yes. Chair Verhalen. Yes. Chair Verhalen votes yes. By a vote of 11 to one, uh, the motion is approved. There being no additional business before this committee today, we stand adjourned for 15 minutes. Thank you.